begin to raise your tide. There's no more room for you in my heart. It vanished in the lonely nights we've spent apart. Your memory starts to fade. Your I never will return I rush the rolling Always keeping my slate clean
are finally open to see that you have nowhere else to turn. Cause it ain't gonna be like it used to be. There is no us, there's only
house left back in the city by an ungrateful child. Where is that you're headed now? That roads are open wide. Is it another city or the vast countryside? You could try and tell what tomorrow's gonna bring, or you could leave for the desert and sing. Suburban grind Get shaken by the fairy tales Of death and demise Scouting for food and shelter Reading your helter skelter Going crazy Searching for a message in the lies Now, how are you coping With a change of scenery? Tell me Who's gonna suicide? Watch you now There's a thousand ways to reach the body negative But who'd really know how
Rome's a road and why is it another city or the best countryside you could try and tell what tomorrow's gonna bring or you could leave for the desert and sing This is the Fish Motel Disaster, or one of my barely lucid musings, which I once typed bleary-eyed following an oddly specific dream, which will now travel from my uneasy subconscious to your moderately awake ears. Here it goes. I had been holidaying with a friend, who I know well, but I couldn't identify now if he either paid or threatened me. We had a single purpose that day and it was possibly the main or in fact the only reason we booked expensive flights into a distant, unspecified location and we were now walking along this busy highway on foot on account of having no money left for a local transport or much by way of anything else really. We were on the way to find, see and use up an entire roll of film to photograph as much into a celebrity's private home as possible with the use of the ridiculously heavy lenses that were causing the thick, sweat-sodden straps to dig into our necks, causing all sorts of unpalatable friction, irritation and probably mouth to moderate infection that for sure needed cleaning at this point. Who the celebrity was, and why we ever genuinely thought that locating their actual private ground floor home based on blurry backgrounds in their magazine interviews and the lengthy hypothesizing exchanges on the message board with a population of a handful was not only an excellent idea, a justified cause to allocate our finances to, and also not at all creepy in excess, was not clear. Yet it does seem like a pretty major plot hole for a dream to omit, but that was the premise. In any case, we were now struggling in humid heat along this busy highway with these analog cameras and their soon to be violating personal boundaries lenses weighing our severely chafed necks down, but we were nearer to our objectives than further away from it, which was something as progress goes. We passed what, according to an information plaque, helpfully provided by the local board of tourism to preempt any questions, uh, used to be a rundown roadside motel, which had previously housed families, improvising homes in its poorly decorated rooms whilst overhearing the activities of an ongoing rotation of people who used the remaining vacant rooms for whatever seedy or mundane reasons bring a person to a place like this. All of which would probably make for stories more coherent and real-life interesting than this mind mesh of imagery and run-on sentences, but we're kind of in this too deep to stop now, really. Uh, it's all beside the point now, because some years earlier, the motel developed a need for said information plaque funded by the Board of Tourism on account of turning into the fish motel as a result of an unspecified incident or disaster. It is only now that I remember the smell which prepared us, just in part, for the site of the fish motel, a considerable distance and time increments before we arrived at it. And it looked pretty much as the name fish motel sounds. The two-story rows of identical rooms and the vending and ice machines available for visitor residents at an excessive charge became engulfed by several enormous fish carcasses. They're formerly gasping for air, or I guess water, but I'm not invested in this enough to look up the correct vocabulary for fish gasping. Mouths conveniently aligned themselves with doorways to each room. One huge grey dead fish per room, still teeming with assorted life eating away at whatever was available in the carcass, and they were connected with the K to form a corridor of sorts. Why the local authorities decided the mysterious arrival of several enormous fish near swallowing a whole entire building but also dying and now still decomposing after several years of unexplained presence was not something to 1. investigate and 2. clean up was also up here. The Fish Motel, now capital letters, had a pretty excessive room rate which apparently funded the ongoing maintenance of delicate fish carcass building management and reduced the rent for the residents who still remained in the building after the unknown fish event, which was now mostly old fish bones and fish entrail matter, but also the same burgundy brown yellow carpets. 
We weren't stopping, but it was hard to miss the row of fish large enough to swallow sections of a small building whilst walking against incoming traffic on the narrow pavement which was not spared the giant fish related viscera. I had worn thin soled and entirely inappropriate cheap footwear which was now very much claimed by the odors. In any case, we made it to the quaint historical streets of the unassumingly expensive and unexpectedly small neighborhood where our celebrity girl lived. It was disproportionately exciting to walk along the nice cobbled streets and the tight rows of tiny but pretty intricately carved narrow houses, all painted black and white and apparently requiring old timey net curtains by the law of local council. Oddly, nobody minded our value cargo shirts, which I would never wear in lucid life, our infected neck skin, or our cheap newborn footwear treading in the fish smell still lingering some kilometers after we passed the fish moto landmark. We must have taken our privacy violation pictures in peace, and all that was left to do was to make the anticlimactic journey back. Predictably, we passed the fish motel again, and this time it was sunset, which can apparently make anything look at least moderately picturesque. We were of course tired, and our own travel and sweltering heat-induced fatigue and odors matched the old fish carcass ambience. I'm pretty sure we were mainly interested in finding a snack rather than a bed for the night, but the agape and partially decomposed fish mouths acting as awning for the individual motel rooms provided an unexpectedly pleasant cool relief from the stuffy heat, so we took a closer look. Most of the rooms were wide open and empty. It was getting quite dark and what was left of the working lights in the now fishmouth corridor provided only a dim blue light, but it was apparent that the fish motel was not generating enough revenue to cover housekeeping. A yellow light was on in one of the rooms and we somehow thought that it was both appropriate and safe to push the slightly ajar door open. If there was any meaning to this dream, then it's probably that boundaries are, or certainly should be, respected and imposed more. In any case, undeterred by common politeness and in some places trespassing laws, making it both a good idea and a considered habit to knock, we opened the room. It was very much lived in, in a miserable personal and newspaper hoarding detritus kind of sense, with the added backdrop of fish bones and some kind of fish related damp covering the walls. We exercised uncharacteristically polite manners at this point and didn't enter, mainly because we could see what was left of the resident in the king-size bed taking up most of the room. Some unspecified biological matter had been used to write I can't take this anymore above the headboard, though the writing was obscured by the layer of a uh, gunshot wound to the head splatter. Therefore, we actually moved on. We then heard off-key singing and muffled TV chatter down the fish mouth hall and apparently thought it was reasonable to say hello and possibly ask for a cold beverage. We knocked this time, apparently learning common manners as this narrative unfolded, and we were greeted by a cheerful middle-aged lady wiping a cup on her flowery apron. Her little room was surprisingly less fish-affected than that of her deceased neighbor, which she confirmed was an unfortunate luck of the troll. Some rooms had more than their share of fish gut than others. Hers was mostly enormous jagged fish bones, now fused with the supporting walls, which made it all the more habitable by all accounts. We did ask if she enjoyed and didn't mind living in the fish motel, number one, because motel living can't be cost-effective, secure or comfortable, and number two, living in a mysterious fish carcass, no matter how dry, isn't conventional or particularly fragrant. She laughed and warmly said she was fine, not that she remembered how the motel became the fish motel all these years ago, whilst she was still a resident. She said nobody came to perform much maintenance or was managing the building much at all these days, but she still paid a weekly rate on her room out of a sense of misguided responsibility, which didn't leave her with much disposable income. Before we asked what she did for a living that afforded her the rates charged by the apparently absent management, she served us some scummy black tea prepared on a single cooking hob haphazardly plugged into the fish wall, which didn't seem entirely okay from the health and safety standpoint. 
The lady became solemn at the memory of her golden retriever who had run out into the night and she presumed that adjusting her voluminous perm, the oncoming traffic too, which left her with an aching lonely hole to fill. In the dream logic and chronology which is at the time of the narrative unfolding somehow perfectly natural and common sense, it turned out we passed said dog, somehow for certain her missing dog and somehow also knew who to call to return him to his fish home. I was sipping my enamel staining tea, which tasted distinctly of onion, wondering if anything prepared in a fish room, or in fact my having a beverage in a fish motel in the first place aligned with veganism at any point. The lady was delighted and insisted on offering us a cash reward for the return of her yellow dog. We protested, mainly to be polite, but she was already making her way to the bedside table to fetch her purse. As she turned around, we saw the back of her head for the first time and exchanged a mannered sequence of silent, confused glances so as not to audibly comment on anything she may feel self-conscious about. While her face was all chubby dimples, peach fuzz moles and stacked over processed perm at the front, the back of her head was a hollow hole. All clean cut and empty but for some wet fish matter which was to be expected given the conditions and a portion of which plopped out onto the nape of her neck as she moved. This apparently was the beginning of the explanation of her contentment at living in the fish motel with her soon to return yellow dog whose head by the way was to my knowledge entirely intact. I then regretted using up all of my camera film, taking the most likely poor pictures of someone's house through their net curtains instead of saving it for the total and unobscured view into the privacy of another person's scooped out head and their open plan fish living situation. I had woken up a few times whilst all this was taking place and each time returned to the fish motel to pick up where I left off, which isn't an entirely common occurrence. It has now been a while since I've woken up from this dream for the final time, but the imagery still lingers in my mind and surfaces uncalled for ever so often. Presumably not unlike the smells strutted into my cheap dream thin shoes which I took everywhere I went after leaving the fish motel with no photographic evidence of it ever existing.
But the lessons never learned Maybe this is just the path that I took I suppose I've died Or maybe I'm just dead alone Is it me who left this world Or is everybody Blessed are the meek In eternal silence they build the throne The universal yell is humbly carried on The thieves of the fire many times before and after defying the gods and sacrifice to their crushing laughter beware the silent one for he hides with
beware the silent one For he hides within A voice beyond Seeking love in all the dirt 
sleep inside.